And with that, we have arrived on yet another Thursday. <laughs> Sorry, here we get all this stuff and suddenly something buzzes and I don't know what that means. But hey, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to Andromeda, another Dave Rush Ask Me Anything Digital Alchemy. What's <laughs> That's so stupid. I, I, we got to do some of this digital. A drama just isn't going to work, though, right? <laughs> so I don't, a drama. We already had a drama, so we're stuck with it. Hey, at any rate, good evening. Uh, where I am, it is uh, 7 p.m. Central Time on uh, today is Thursday, September 7th, the 7th of September in the year 2023, and in 19 minutes from now. Here in the United States, kickoff of the first regular season NFL football game, the Detroit Lions versus uh, Kansas City Chiefs. And it's anybody's game. It's going to be interesting. I, I love football, and I bailed out of my uh, fantasy football league this year. I, I enjoyed it for the last two years. Uh, our, our old friend Scott Jernigan roped me into it sort of uh, a couple of years ago. And I came in about last place the first year I played because I've never done anything like that before. And uh, <laughs> I, I let the system auto draft for me. That didn't work out well. I worked hard. I won a couple of games. Excuse me. <coughs> I beg your pardon. <clears throat> and then last year I actually played and. Uh, I think I tied for first, but, uh, fantasy football, I like football. I really like football, but I don't want to work to watch football. And I don't like to, uh, care more about individual players, man. My guy's got to do well. That team has to do well. So my guy does well. Uh, I just didn't find that as enjoyable as watching a football game and saying, this is the team I want to win tonight. Let's go team. <sighs> Beg your pardon. <clears throat> and even if I'm not rooting for a good team or for, for a particular team to win, I like the sport. I like the science of it. I like, <clears throat> okay, enough of that nonsense. Uh, let's just check in, see who is amongst us. Hey, all right. The usual crowd so far. Tullowit leads the way half an hour before showtime, followed almost immediately by Patricia Grace, about to eat some tacos and tune in. Tuna tacos. <laughs> I like that. Tacos and tech. I feel a round table. Just that title alone is a winner. Let's see. Dave Rush checked in. Jason Helms is here. Thank you for uh, uh, sharing my announcement. I didn't get the announcement for the... I always do an announcement on Monday for what's the upcoming show. Sometimes a little late, I'll do it Tuesday, and I don't know where I was this week on it. But And then I prep all of the uh, the social media announcements just before that time, post the It's Coming Up on Thursday meeting, and then on Thursday morning, I post the, hey, we're going live today, don't miss it. And uh, I remembered that about three hours ago, two hours ago. <laughs> so not much going on. Thank you very much for the blessings. Hi, nerds. <laughs> all right, what up? Hope all the nerds are doing good. Now did you catch my cold? <laughs> Pin six since Tuesday. Yeah, they, it, it's COVID. Somebody's got a new strain, and that means everybody must panic. <clears throat> Oh, well, here we are. So let's start this puppy off. I, it's a fun show tonight. It's an interesting show. And uh, I, I'm trying to be a, a better person at organizing and planning these shows so that they don't run long. Uh, better to run short than long, but we can always fill time. But nothing worse than, I'm not done yet. There's no more. I'm going to leave it for next week. And I never do because I don't like that. Anyways. This is Andromeda, and I am your erstwhile host, David Rush, your tech from Texas. Excuse me, and we're here because we like to talk about technology in all of its forms and, and how it impacts our daily lives and perhaps 
our long-term lives. Uh, we've got a little bit of a bent. I've got a little bit of a bent toward Linux and security, but uh, no Linux tonight. We are going to do some security stuff, but uh, whatever kind of technology. I have stuff lined up in boxes ready to do as projects, and uh, I just got to sit down and you know do the prep. I got to pick one up. Uh, I was thinking of one yesterday. I, I got an idea. It'll be a, a Linuxy one. It'll be a Raspberry Pi one. But I think you're going to like this, particularly, if, assuming I can pull this off, uh, if you are musically inclined. I have a, a great show in mind, either for this coming week or for the following. So there's, there's just great stuff out there, and uh, you can have some really fun stuff. Oh, we did regular NFL season. If you're keeping count, I started keeping count again. This is show number 26 of the Survivors, after some of the ones that we've cut out went away. And so I greet you with, as ever and always, Eep, Op, Orc, Ah, uh, Ah. Uh. Do I want to do that? Yeah, we'll throw this up. I don't know what's going to happen here. Um... I'm doing something new with OBS, and I don't know how it's going to work out. I tried it this week. We'll see. You know, things look good, but I got questions and I got issues. Anyway, let's see what's cooking here. I picked a topic this week, and then I was developing news and slides, and I ran into this. And I thought, oh, this is familiar. Um, some of you may have seen this slide on another presentation in another world uh, in which many of us live. And I thought, oh, why not? I'll snag it too because it kind of fits in. So our project last week was to explore the possibility of creating our own customized Linux distro using instructions and resources from the LFS project, the Linux from scratch project. And busy life, busy, busy everything. But I, I've started to read through the book and the steps and I will get started on that as a project probably in about two weeks. And I am going to do it the way I described it. It'll be a, a recorded sideshow. So it'll be in the archives, in the recorded section, excuse me, recorded sections, not in the live section. And hopefully we'll be able to follow along from there. But as I said, when, when this is a complicated project and if you screw it up here and you step, 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 that screw up will eventually expose itself and then you got to start over. So I, I wouldn't follow along on this thing uh, until I'm getting well deep into it, maybe even done, but we'll see. Maybe you'll learn the same mistakes I will, or maybe you'll fix them. Hey, don't do it that way. Maybe you find my problem and I can go back early. Our project this week is OSINT open source intelligence. And I'm going to show you some amazing and awesome online research tools to perform OS intelligence. Uh, OS, not operating system, but open source. Boy, I'm just, I am so nervous about what I'm going to try and pull off, but we'll see. So let's start as we ever and always do with tech news of the week. And I didn't overdo it, but man, I got a couple of goodies in here. These are kind of fun. And that means back to the slideshow where we talk about the island nation of Anguilla. Anguilla, Anguilla, pick your poison. It is a British territory in the Caribbean. They have an incredible windfall that has befallen them. And that is, at some time in the past 12, 13 years, something like that, IANA, the Internet Assigned Naming Association, said, we're going to make a two-letter domain for every country in the world. So you can do, those countries can do with it what they will. They will own it. They can sell it. They can give it away free. They can do whatever they want with it. Anguilla, we'll call it that, has the domain identifier of .ai. 
and because of the incredible explosion of AI technology in the last six months, and it's you know it's been slowly percolating for some years, but it's just blown itself off the face of the planet in the last six to eight months. There have been 287,000 registrations of AI uh, domains, and they are expecting, I don't know what they're selling this for, but they are expecting to gross 30 million selling .ai domain registrations this year. So good for Angula. Um, I think this is fascinating because we saw this happen once before with a less than happy ending. The Another Island Nation, the Island Nation of Tuvalu, Tuvalu, some people call it. They have the extension, the domain of .tv. And TV is really cool because it's not an English, it's not an American word, it's not an English word. It's not, it is a worldwide term that means the same thing everywhere you go. TV, short for television, means television. And so Tuvalu was going to make for its 16,000 inhabitants or citizens uh, bazillions of dollars because every television station on the planet was going to want a TV domain. It's a, uh, a not high altitude island and practically immediately after this windfall came into existence, the island sh uh, sank or the seas rose. I, I believe the water level right now is uh, six to eight inches above the highest point, and nobody lives there. If nobody lives there, it's not an inhabited nation, and they can't do anything with it. So poor Tuvalu, this great windfall. So I hope the same thing or something similar doesn't happen to Anguilla. That would make them very angry. Man, I love this story. I love this story. You're going to like it. You better love this one, too. Imagine, if you will. And by the way, everything I'm about to say is beyond imagination. It really happened. Imagine, if you will, it's the year 2010. And you are a consultant. You install Linux systems and support them. Install computer systems and all that stuff. And you get a call from a prospective customer. Customer says, I need a system that can do uh, a very large list of things. Now, the requirements that we're demanding. And again, this is 2010, okay? We're 13, 14 years ago. And what they wanted was a, a box, an enterprise-grade box that could do DHCP, had an internal DNS, an Apache web server with PHP, NFS, Samba, SMTP, and more. And the guy consultant his name is uh stefano marinelli he said sure i can do that and they said but there's a catch um we need it in two days fully set up and operational so he said yeah <laughs> now he had a problem here to pull all this off in that kind of short order they couldn't get their hands on the enterprise grade equipment so they used off the shelf PC type stuff. So enterprise grade server would have dual power supplies always running because one is going to fail and uh, we can't wait for the other one to come back up. It's got to be up and running. Now he said, you know, that's not possible with your time frame. We're going to use a PC and all the other. And the operating system that he chose was called NetBSD. In fact, it was version 5.1. They are still in business. Uh, NetBSD is still published. And maintained and updated. They're on, I think, 9.3 right now. Anyways, so he sets it up. And it's pretty good. It does everything. It needed a couple of tweaks over the next year or two. Uh, be, amongst other things, there was a uh, there was some lag in the uh, SMB world. That's an, uh, yeah, okay, we'll leave it at that. But otherwise, ran just fine. And after a year or so, the customer's happy, Stefano's happy, and they go their separate way. They, they lose touch with each other, and yeah, there you go. End of story. Except not, because earlier this year, 
the customer chases down Mr. Marinelli and says, oh, thank God you still exist. We need some service on that old system you installed. He said, what do you mean? <laughs> what have you done to it and what kind of... And so he goes over to check it out. <laughs> the service that they need... It was, it was the same. It was the same. It was still running 5.1 NetBSD. It was still running all the same stuff that he installed in the same versions for the most part. And they said, this thing is still doing 80% of the tasks that we needed it to do back when you set this up originally. It was 2010, 13 years ago. And so, but it needs a, a little bit of, of work and polish here. So he does the work and polish and then he starts asking questions to which they don't have the answers to. They're, they're not particularly technical. The system works. They know how to, to administer it, make, a, make accounts for emails and things like that, but they don't get into the guts. And so he says, well, how long has this thing been running? We don't know. It always runs. And so he went into the logs. The last time that it had rebooted was in 2012. 12 years ago, 11 years ago, whenever, 9, 10, 11 years ago, there's all kinds of different articles out there. Uh, that's running on the original motherboard, the original power supply. That power supply hasn't failed in that long. And there's a really good reason for that. It's kind of useful. Um, all power supplies are going to fail. They don't usually die from age. They usually die from power spikes. This thing doesn't experience power spikes because the building is a mission critical building with all the other stuff going on in it. And so they are 100% on generator all the time. And so it, it's never lost power. That's just mind boggling. And the reason that it went down in 2012 was following an earthquake. <laughs> Nine years, completely uninterrupted uptime, consumer grade hardware set up in just two days and then basically left untouched. Is that's just freaking awesome? That is it's so good. All right, let's take a break. See who's here, who's doing what, and then uh, just a couple more, one or two more stories. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Who's your favorite football team? I'm from Cleveland. <laughs> My favorite football team is the worst football team in the NFL. It is the Cleveland Browns. I live here in Houston. I like me my Texans, but when it comes down to Texans and Browns, go Browns, baby. <laughs> Digital and analog, sure. It's just a, it's a it's a trailer. You know, it doesn't flow. It's it, you know you can clearly feel that it's an add-on, but okay, it works. Yeah, it, it, that's just stunning. All right, one or two other goodies here. Comet Nishimura. You can see it's green. This isn't the first green one I've seen in my lifetime. It's about the third, but uh, we're not going to see this one again until the year 2317. So 300 years from now or so, <clears throat> 21, two, three. Yeah. 300 years. So it's going to do closest pass in five days on 12 September. And it's really going to be tough to see. So I wanted you to be exposed to this uh, because now through the next five days are going to be the best time. And it's going to get, even though it gets closer and closer, it's going to get harder and harder to see. Why is that, you ask? Funny you should ask. Let me see if I can help answer that. By the way, this was a picture taken uh, either last night or two nights ago. Uh, and there's a gif of this thing, the guy... Uh, did not stop motion, but uh, slow motion photography and then sped it up. And all of that tail is wispy cloud dust. It's really amazing and gorgeous. Go look that up. Uh, here's the problem. It, it looks like it is flying uh, left to right. Yeah, I'm sorry, right to left. It's from our viewer's perspective falling straight down. I'm going to guess that this is probably about 10 degrees, 12 degrees above the horizon. And so as we watch this over the next couple of days, 
Here it is tonight, September 5th. Oh, that's a really bad. Well, on the 12th, it's going to be about a degree above the east-northeast horizon. So you can see the moon upper right, September uh, 11th. It's going to be a nice dark night to see it, but you got to be able to see over the trees, you know, get in your, uh, in the top of your high rise. Oh no. Cause then there'll be light pollution all over the place. So you're going to have to, to, if you really want to see this thing at its best and you'll be able to see it next day, uh, first thing in the morning, excuse me, but, uh, about an hour after sundown is best viewing time for any of these dates and ditto for, uh, the morning view about an hour before sun up but this is a good one this is a really really good one i hope you get a chance to see it uh you can see it with the naked eye you don't get much of the green tint you've got to have really good eyes so a pair of binoculars and not real powerful binoculars uh you know a nice 10 by 50 20 by 50 something like that uh even a 7 by 50 it'd be just fine 7 by 35 You'll get a good view of it, and you'll get night screen. You may not see that uh, wispy tail with uh, real small binoculars. Uh, telescope, eh. You can see the telescope better than binoculars unless your binoculars have uh, a good, solid tripod stand. All right, that should be it for slides. Yeah, that's all the slides I've got until we come back to that guy. I didn't write up anything personal this week. Um, I hope you had a good holiday weekend here in the states i had a very busy one um i would not call it a fun weekend i didn't do anything fun i stayed home and i caught up on honeydews other than smoking four racks of ribs which is uh, <laughs> i'm now looking at as a mistake it was very typical in the last couple of years to smoke four racks maybe six racks because i had a college kid who uh, would come home and he could eat two racks of ribs in a night if he put his mind to it. So we always want to have enough for everybody. But young college man has gone off, has a real job in his own apartment and all that happy stuff. So uh, I just made four racks of ribs out of force of habit. And we are still, we got two of them left. And that was, I think we, I don't know if I did those on Saturday or Sunday. We have, we had a, a project that's been uh, kind of on a back burner. It was stalled. How's that? I have this marvelous tree out back. Uh, it's called a live oak, and it's it's a lovely tree. It's the the trunk is Halloween magical, but it's not scary. It's it's wonderful. It makes a, a great wedding tree background kind of thing, but. On those rare occasions that used to happen here in Texas, uh, oh, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago when we got rain, uh, that thing would uh, pick spring and it would just explode. And the branches can hang pretty low, making mowing difficult. I don't care that they're low. They look gorgeous that way, but uh, mowing is really a challenge around that tree. So every year or two, we break out the chainsaws and stuff and cut down the low hangers. And the battery on my electric chainsaw failed a couple months ago. Me and the kid, the kid was still here visiting or something like that. So uh, we just have a trailer full of limbs and branches and there were some, they've got to be cut up a little more and there's a little bit more work to be done. So I played with the battery and I played with the charger and mucked around and procrastinated and finally said, okay, enough of that nonsense. And a week or so ago, I, ordered a new battery and a new charger because I can't figure out what it was. And so that got me back into the yard on the weekend. Uh, I guess Saturday probably cut down the rest, cut up all of the long branches and got them tied into bundles. That's what you have to do around here. And uh, today I had a dental appointment, uh, another one and two more with the dental surgeon and then back to regular dentistry and get these, horrors cleaned up gosh that's why i don't smile so i got a big mustache these days my ugh, you don't want to see that anyways uh so i went and uh, did that appointment i took the trailer full of branches with me and then went to our uh, our county facility where you're allowed to give them all of your tree debris 
Other than that, it was just a nice, peaceful weekend. Got caught up on binging. All right, well, that's perfect timing-wise. Checking my notes. <laughs> you should be watching the same shows I watch. And the mother-in-law is trying to turn us on. I guess I'll return the, the missus on. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. To a new show. And I could not come up with the name of it to save my life. And the missus has stepped out with the girls. So next week. But. All caught up on Strange New Worlds. The season's over, waiting for a new one. All caught up on what we do in the shadows. Uh, and man, the last couple episodes, or the last four or five episodes, uh, have all been winners except one, which is okay even then. Tacoma FD, they go up and down. They could be better, but they're all right. Uh, still waiting on Star Trek Discovery, first quarter 24, they're saying. And all caught up on Futurama, so... That's our Friday night thing. We just, we'll binge on Friday nights, get all caught up on the week shows. All right, well, that's everything up until starting Yawn Project. Fingers crossed, we've been online for about a half an hour now, and nothing has crashed yet. So let me go switch over to... Hey, Xerxes is here. Good to see you, man. All right, I'm going to test something here. Let's see what shows up. Click that, click that. Hey, look at that. It's doing just what it's supposed to do. Let's go back to this for now. I don't see our other mod on here. Just too bad. I think he's really going to like this one. I think you guys are all going to like this one. So, all right, let's talk about it here for a second then. Um, I ran across an article, I don't know, a week and a half ago. And said, oh, wow, that's really, really interesting. I am no different than anyone else. I get the same spam that everybody does. I get the same phishing attacks and things like that. But what does make me a little bit different is I am a vindictive jerk. <laughs> and I, 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 I do what it takes to get back. And I'll tell you, I've gotten three of these in the last couple of years. And it's funny because they all start the same. It, on my LinkedIn profile, near the top of the entries, it says, rightfully, truthfully, that I am a, a precinct judge for my county, for uh, my party, and I conduct elections. I preside over elections at our voting place. Actually, I haven't done that for uh, about a year and a half now. There's a new precinct chair, and they like to do it themselves, and that's for their prerogative. So cool. But it still stays in my LinkedIn profile. And I will get an email from somebody that says, man, I was looking through, and I see that you have this credential. You are a, uh, a, a precinct judge for your county. Your, that skill set will... Uh, translate really well into this wonderful offer that I would love to share with you. <laughs> Man, that suddenly becomes my reason for living. Because the first thing I do is research the person and their email address and the domain of their email. And I find out everything that I can. And then I write them back and I said, look, I, I would love to talk to you about this offer. You're right up my alley. I have three questions, if you please. And as soon as you answer those, then we can open up a full dialogue. Uh, number one, I want to know, what is it that you find with this job listing that I have that matches your offer so well? Where did you find this? Because they don't say they found it on LinkedIn, but the only place that I put that for the most part. Uh, and then I will ask one or two questions about them personally. I noticed that you uh, have never kept a job for more than seven months. Your LinkedIn profile and your other job histories that I looked you up. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? And you know, why would I want to trust you? And uh, the same thing, I, I noticed that the product that you're shilling uh, went bankrupt three years ago and, and is back now. And it's always a franchise. I always want to sell some kind of restaurant franchise or uh, some other thing like that. 
uh, I carried one guy for 12 months and he wouldn't answer any of those. And I'd say, no, dude, I, I see you keep sending me this stuff and I'd love to talk about this, but I'm not going to talk about it until you answer these questions. He finally went away, uh, but three times. Well, okay, that's great. But the point of all this is trying to find information about people, organizations, email addresses, and all that other stuff starts with the usual traditional search engines. If you're not paranoid, uh, you're probably going to go to Google first. I'm paranoid. I'm going to go someplace else. I'm going to go to Quant or DuckDuckGo or something like that. Uh, and that's all great. Uh, and then, of course, there's this other piece of the world right now that has exploded in the last six or eight months. Excuse me. And that are the various AIs that are popping up like mushrooms after a rainstorm. But they don't have the depth of information that most of us want when we really need to dig in and gather intel about these resources. So I found this great article the other day that said, you know what, here is the biggie intel sites that you can gather stuff like Dave likes to do and, and much, much more. Uh, and so let me post the link to this thing because we're not going to go through all these tonight. Uh, let's see. We got to go over here. We got to go over here. Ooh, lots of stuff going on while I was doing that. Hey, Scarheart is here. That fit in really well. Xerxes is here. Sends back the evil grin. Little known fact, says Tullowit. Dave Rush brought the Whig Party back to politics. Somebody had to do it. Damn Tories. All right. You want my dad joke on Whigs and Tories? <laughs> so the Whig Party holding meetings in silence, in, in, in secret, in colonial Williamsburg. And <laughs> they were farmers. They were ranchers. They had dogs. But they discovered that chickens had a, an affinity for recognition and they could train a chicken to look for clothing styles or headgear or something like that and so they would train these chickens and set them outside the the doorway of, of where they were holding their meetings the wigs were and then they they had a command for it and so just before they start the meeting Somebody who trained the chicken would go out and talk to the chicken and say, chicken, catch a Tory. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 47 people just stabbed themselves. <laughs> Darn right, Canadian bacon and pineapple. Yaroo, let's hold that discussion one more time, shall we? <laughs> oh, here's my other quickie. So I I got to the uh, oral surgeon today a little early. And I checked in, you know, 15, <laughs> exactly. Stab them eyes out, baby. Because <laughs> that's where I was today. So rather than leave me out in the waiting room, uh, as soon as I checked in, I sat down for about 45 seconds or so. And Mr. Rush, come on back. Okay. And uh, park yourself in Uncle Chair here. Doc will be in. I'll let, the, he didn't, she didn't even say he'll be in shortly. And I would have been stunned if he was because I was 15, 20 minutes early. <laughs> so... Yeah, I got my phone. I'm doing my thing. I'm just waiting it out. I'm doing fine. And they have a station on. And every time I've been in there, this, the radio station that they play has always played country music. Not my cup of mud, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I can tolerate it. I play it when I DJ. But it wasn't. They, it, it went into 80s soft rock. They were doing uh, Madonna and the Cardigans, Love Fool. Ba, 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 ba. Never mind, you won't get that done. Uh, and and I, I couldn't find a rope to hang myself, but fortunately, I was in a room all by myself with this suicide-inducing music, and there were sharp things all over the place. So I'm just ripping open drawers looking to open up a vein, and right about then... Uh, Doc turned up and, what are you doing? Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to kill myself. Fix that station. <laughs> and, 
we wound up talking for the next 10 minutes about music and that particular station and why it's playing. And, and he says, look, there's two guys that work here and there's 17 women and we're not allowed to pick the station. <laughs> All right, back to business. So open or, or AIs and traditional search engines don't have the guts level information that we want. And so there are these wonderful collections of stuff out there that does have that depth and breadth. And we're gonna, I've had this thought here that I wanted to share. It'll probably come back to me in a second. Oh, yeah. So a good friend of ours a while back did a presentation uh, from a perspective that I'd never really thought about. Uh, and he told us about active surveillance versus passive surveillance. And, you know, I've read about it academically, but he made it come alive and active surveillance is when you interact with your target okay i want to know something about this server i'm gonna log into this server i'm gonna look at its logs uh, i want to know something about this person i'm gonna call this person or i'm gonna call somebody that knows him uh, and the problem with that is maybe it turns up good information but it's just as likely to elicit a shutdown somebody's asking about me i'm out of here so passive surveillance is very observational. We don't interact with the target at all, or even close to related things. We gather information about the target from watching the target or from watching the watchers of the target. And that's what uh, open source intelligence is all about. It's about open source. It's stuff that anybody can use. May or may not be free, but it's available to anybody who... Uh, is willing to pay the fees if there is a fee or register if there's registration and some of them don't even require that so that's open source and the the resources we're going to look at here are they're just out there doing the research themselves so i'm going to start out in a different order than the one that they uh, put together in the article i just posted for you let me share this brave browser window hey look at that so this is shodan S-H-O-D-A-N. It's on Shodan.io. I'm not going to read you these uh, uh, URLs. If you want to go dig more into the details on this stuff, uh, just go hit that link that I posted a few minutes ago. And all the URLs are there. And I don't. I could spend the next three hours introducing Shodan. And that's it's just not going to happen because i got a few that I want to show you. So let me show you a little bit about Shodan. Shodan... Uh, some things I want you to know about. There's free and paid tiers. Uh, there's a free unregistered tier. If you do a search on that, you get one page of results for that search. You can do another search. If you search the same thing, you're going to get the same page. You could do a search on something else. You're going to get a page full of information, but that's it. You can't get beyond that. There's a free registered tier that will give you unlimited pages of results on your searches but it won't let you search for everything that it catalogs and tracks and then of course there's a premium version uh, i lucked out once a year shodan has a one day sale with a lifetime free registered tier almost free uh and i just happened to run across a, a message about hey the sale this the annual sale is going on right now get it and uh i registered for five bucks for a lifetime account on Shodan. I don't have all the details, but I'm not a, a security pen test or anything like that, so I don't need that. All right, so let me show you. Let's just do a quick demo here of this one. <clears throat> I did a search on here called, I just said webcam XP. This is a popular make and model of webcam out there. And you get to see, not live feeds yet, but snapshots of people running these things. You see these little uh, boxes with arrows? That means go to. Uh, and then we can take you to a website. So let me go see if I got anything here that I consider safe. Because I don't know what these are. It's been a while since I've done these tests. That's dark. Where is this thing? That's in France. It'll be dark in France right now. No, it's... I don't know. Let's go see what's over here going on in France. Nah, that camera's not showing anything. 
I'll take one more stab. UK. It's dark in UK right now. I don't want to look in anybody's living room. Kuala Lumpur. Maybe. I don't see a 200 on that, so there's probably not going to be... Korea. Again, these aren't real-time. These are snapshots. They may have been taken a long time ago. Yeah, there we go. So we're looking at somebody's backyard in Korea. And this is one of the interesting things about Shodan. Shodan is out there scanning the web all day, all night for all kinds of resources like cameras. And it's trying to detect the make and model of camera. And it'll show you that on here. That's why we know this is a webcam XP. And they have published all the default account names and passwords. And, of course, there's lots of open ones out there, too. So, And there's lots and lots and lots of other Shodan resources. But I just thought that's that's a, a really fun one. All right. Now I want to take you to another one. DNS Dumpster. Let me wake up the page here. And then make sure that we're sharing it appropriately. Yes, okay. All right. If you're familiar with who is, who is is a domain registration information database. You can uh, go to whois.com and then pick the who is tag tab and then put in uh, a, a URL, www.myfavoriteplace.com. And it will tell you who owns it and a lot of information about that site, the registration information about the owner. A lot of that stuff is hidden these days. Well, this takes it to the next level. This shows you hosts associated with a given domain. <coughs> Excuse me. And lots of other information. So I'm going to show you one. Uh, I just picked this out of the blue. There's nothing unsafe here. Uh, how about my? Uh, how about this site? Total Sem. Dot com. This might take a second to, for it to load. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Grind, grind, grind. Hey, there we go. And we can see that this IP address is part of a block of addresses that's owned and operated by some host. And then we get down into here and we see the DNS servers where this is registered. And get a little further down, and here's actual hosts that are associated with this thing. Uh, internal IP addresses, external IP addresses, lots and lots and lots of fascinating information here. Yep, we even got a dev.army.totalsub.com, or they do. So dnsdumpster.com. That one's just cool as all get out. And again, go get it from uh, the site where we started this. I'll repost that. As soon as I find it, the entry, there it is. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we went here. You're going to see this, and that's okay. There's no secrets there. They're all hidden. <laughs> all right, how about another one? That was dumpster, dump, dump. We'll do two or three more of these. How about the exploit database? This is an amazing thing. The exploit database, uh, it's, a, it's an archive of public exploits that correspond to vulnerable hardware, software, operating systems, and some other goodies. So I'm going to just show you this, the landing page here on this one. You can search for any particular site, program, all kinds of goodies. So you can see here are some of the most recently discovered stuff. Uh, there are CVEs associated with these versions of PHP. Here's a, uh, a problem with a D-Link DPH 400 SE that can expose sensitive information. There's hardware. Uh, here's a gateway that uh, there's, it's a web app and it impacts multiple targets and platforms. Here's a Windows problem that's been discovered, more PHP stuff. You get the idea. A really useful thing when I want to know 
weaknesses of let's say I'm a bad guy. I don't that's not the hat that I want to wear, but my hat today is black. So uh, I want to know what kind of stuff they're running uh, and if there's any. So I'll research that through Shodan or through some of the other stuff that's available here. And then I'll go here and look for known exploits. These aren't vulnerabilities. These are known exploits. And we can go download them and get more information about all that stuff and uh, documentation on what the exploit is and, and what happened. So that's a fascinating thing. You're going to like this one. Full Hunt. Bring up the page. This is fullhunt.io. And this is an attack surface database for the internet. Uh, enables companies to discover their own attack service. That's the intent, right? I run an organization and I run a, uh, uh, web servers. And I want to know how my web servers might be attacked. So yesterday I ran this. I ran a demo here yesterday to do a test uh, on my web server, Adromeda. Dot com and I got an error message and I said I'm gonna wait 24 hours and see if that gets solved so here we go ah the world has changed here yesterday when I ran this it says we have never scanned a drama.com but we will soon and so that was my goal to wait it out and find out uh, what open ports I have what assets I've got running all that kind of other good stuff so I got a bunch of ports that are open on here, 2, 4, 5, 11 open ports. And it's not mine. This is a uh, a hosted server on uh, Namecheap. So I don't have control over most of this stuff. You see my IP address. There's the Namecheap proof. I got an FTP server that runs on there. I didn't even know I had an FTP server running on there. I can set that up. That'll be cool. We got IMAP running. I, I know there's a mail server on there. And a mail sender, of course, SMTP and cPanel is running on Namecheap. So lots of information about that. Now, how about if we go to uh, a different one? How about we take a look? Scott, this one I'm doing for you. I was hoping you would be on today. Cheese.com. Cheese.com shut down in, uh, I don't know, June or July of last year <laughs> but we always use it as demos in classes so you can see these are all archived values mostly are archived values uh, we got forbidden but they keep their archive reports from back in the day so even if it's down if it's been scanned you can get information on that server there's his ip6 address there's his cgi addresses and then i wanted i didn't know if i if a drama was going to work today so i also picked one very active one just to do something interesting and fun. This one took a moment. I thought it was locked up, but it's just because there's so much stuff out there. Dell.com. So let's see if he takes a long time on this one. Yeah, he is. And how are we doing on timer? 48. I got one or two more after this, and that'll take care of everything. There we go. So. Here's, there are different sites all over the world. I got a German site over here. And here's one in Spicewood, U.S., Singapore, Germany, GmbH. And each of these is clickable. and I can get in more information about all of these things. These are elements that are running on these sites. It's a CDN. It's running Akami or Akamai. And Akamai Ghost, it runs port 80 and port 443. There's a C name for it in DNS. You get the idea. There's just tons and tons of information out there. I like this one. Let me see if this is going to load up. Oh, here, let's force it. HTTPS colon whack whack. This is called gray noise. Now, gray noise is really cool. I'm going to come to head for this one for just a second. So every day, 
all day long, all night long, 24 seven, hundreds of thousands, millions of hosts are out there scanning the internet. They're going to hit on adromeda.com. Somebody's going to hit that tonight and probably 10 or 20 stations are going to hit adromeda.com tonight and it's going to probe it. They're going to try and probe all 65,535 UDP ports and all 65,535 TCP ports and lots and lots of other information that's going to try and gather about me. And mostly the, the hosts that are doing that are bad guys. They are looking for weaknesses. Sometimes they're not, though. Sometimes it's just search engines. Sometimes it's uh, Google and DuckDuck and all those folks saying, hey, you know, we're, gonna, we're trying to get snapshots of these sites to, to ostensibly help people find this stuff. Which is kind of sort of true. It's not altruistic because, you know, while you're on the Google site looking for adromeda.com and information about it, uh, they also want to sell you a toaster. <laughs> Well, what Gray Noise does is it tracks the trackers. Oh, how cool. So here, let's try a, a couple demos and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, they've got one here to pick in advance, 167, 94, 138, 36. All right, I'm gonna use that one. And it will tell me everything it knows about the host that owns that IP address and the activities of that host. So we'll put that here in the search box. And we say search. And he goes, buzz, 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 grind, grind, grind. Come on. There we go. And he says, first of all, this doesn't seem to be a bad guy. In, in all of our reporting and watching, they're not doing anything bad. Okay, it's benign. And then now we can find out the things that Gray Noise has watched it do and information about it. We can see their fingerprints and they're the hash fingerprints that they've generated, all kinds of good information. Cool, huh? Now, how about I go look at one of those IP addresses that scans Andromeda today? And we do a lookup on him from Gray Noise. That's one, that's legit. I've been scanned by this IP address before. Oh, this one's malicious. From this specific IT, it's considered internet background noise since it's scanning the entire internet. It's not targeting me specifically. But if it was, it would tell me if it knew about it anyways. And by the way, when you bring this up the first time, the first thing that it does is looks... Oh, uh, no, sorry. That's a different thing. Okay. So, gray noise. It's viz.graynoise.io. Two more? Yeah, two more. How are we doing on time here? 53, I can do that. Intelligence X. This is a little different than many search engines. And I think the first time uh, when you land on it, he starts out by checking you out. I know your IP address. Is that this one? Maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm thinking Netless. Yeah, okay. So this is a search engine that... It works with what are called selectors, specific search terms like, here we go, email addresses. This is right up Dave's alley when I want to find that guy who's trying to sell me a franchise. I got his email address. I got his domain from his email address. So we can look up domains, email addresses, URLs, IPs, CIDR addresses, Bitcoin addresses, IPFS hatches, hashes, so much more. So let me put one up here. This is the contact for my side hustle. Info at ProcoAudio.net. Now, notice up here at the top, I got a login and a sign in. I have not created an account on here, so the results are going to be disappointing. He says, hey, good news. I found that entry in seven different text files all over the web and one CSV file. But in order to see that, I've got to register and have a pro account. There's one here, uh, a GZ file or te a, G a text file in here that I can go open this file and find that entry in here. It's just a list of collected email addresses, this particular one I've looked that up. But wow, what a really cool and amazing search engine 
for stuff that you cannot get on the usual ones. Okay, one final one, Netless, N-E-T-L-A-S dot I-O. There's more in that original article. So, okay, we come up to a landing page. I want to try it. We're not seeing. Man, that was dumb, huh? <clears throat> All right, here's Netless. I'll go back and show you that other page. Let's go back and do it now. <clears throat> so here was Intelligence X. And there was Gray Noise. I don't know if I cut you. Yeah, I, so that was the Gray Noise showing the malicious IP and what they've been doing. They've been trying to dig into port 21s and 2s and 3s and 5s and 30s and so forth. Okay, so here's Intelligence X. Uh, which is Intel X, what is the name of that URL, the official name? IntelX.io, no dashes or anything. And so I put in an email address and said, what do you know about that email address? And he says, hang on. So here's what he says, is I don't have an account or a password. Uh, he says, I found stuff for you, but you can't see it unless you have a pro account. But... Here's some stuff that I'll let you see with this free preview account that you're using, no account. And these are basically files that just hold list of email addresses. All right, last one, Netless. Kind of like Atlas. It's netless.io. And here we discover, research, monitor, any assets available online. Let's try it. And the first thing he does is said, I'm looking up your IP address right now, and I'll tell you what I know about that. So your IP address is 73 dot blah, 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 blah. I don't care that you know that. It's in the internet DNS because I still run my Raspberry Pi web servers here on top of my desk. So you got to be able to know what that is. And you can see that uh, Comcast is running me, and I'm located here in Spring, Texas. And it even gives, it, this isn't the actual coordinates of my house. It's the coordinates of the nearest Comcast drop. You get the idea. And it says, hey, at this site, I found running uh, a web server that's running on port 80 and port 443. And they're both Apaches. Sure. <laughs> Look at that. Running Raspbian. So pretty cool, huh? There's more, but we're out of time. Uh, there's URL scanners out there. There's code scanners out there. Is that awesome? So you want, and, and it's not just scanners. You got this snippet of code. You want to know where it came from. There are search engines that track that stuff. I want to know an API for this. I want to know something about these languages. Man, good, good stuff. Which one is that? Uh, oh, okay. I didn't put that one in here. Uh, there is one worthy of mention, and that's wiggle.net, one G. And I'm not going to bring it up. We're out of time. But wiggle.net is the electronic equivalent of war chalking. It is a database of every reported Wi-Fi network in the world and the passwords. And they get updated all the time. And this is great when you're traveling the world. Uh, if I travel the world, I'm in a hotel, I get internet access. Uh, at the site that I'm working at, I get internet access. But if I want to go out in the evening and, and, and you know roam with my phone, well, I don't want international roaming charges. I want to hit their Wi-Fi. Uh, I'll hit wiggle.com or wiggle.net. Find out what the local Wi-Fi is, and I got that info. All right, so next week, we're, we're ready to wind things up here. Oh, yeah, just perfect. Uh, next week, my tentative plan is let's make music with let's say some flavor of Linux, probably uh, Raspberry Pi OS on a Raspberry Pi, and some... Uh, MIDI controllers. Not sure that I'm going to be able to pull that off. If not, I got a backup plan, but there we are. Hey, as ever and always, good news. We survived another week without a crash. Huzzah. The only mistake was Dave. I always forget. I've gone to head and I, when I'm looking at the website, I can't see my feed. So that was that error. Sorry about that. We will do this again as ever and always. Same time, same bat channel next week. And so until then, I wish you a great rest of the week. Please take care of each other. Take steps to stay healthy. 
I'm doing all kinds of stuff here trying to get ready to shut down. There we go. Uh, and if at all possible, call or visit your parents. And of course, never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resources we have are you and I. And with that, good night. I'll see you on Andromeda next Thursday and on the other platforms that I'm on. Uh, I am officially scheduled to be on one of those other platforms this coming Tuesday night and the following Tuesday night. Those are my official nights, so yahoo. Uh, until then, remember, how you do anything is how you do everything. So eep, op, orc, ah, uh, ah, uh, I'm out of here.